book. It's just us now. You and me. And I need you to listen to me. You couldn't have saved them. There is nothing you could have done. You couldn't have known. The birds. The way they took to the sky. I should have sensed it. No. This isn't your fault. I should have taken him with me. Kaim. Lito. I failed, Michael. I failed then. I know it feels that way. But you didn't. You didn't fail them. And I won't fail you. Now or ever, I am with you. The entire crew is with you. We're gonna do everything in our power to make sure you make it back safely. But I need you to trust me right now. Welcome to D Space Pride, a gay Star Trek podcast. I am one of your hosts, Johnson Lee, and with me is my co-host, Mike Thurlow. Mike, how are you this fine Thursday late evening? Yes, we are uh, recording quite late. Well, I can't help it if you're so busy. Oh, I'm so busy. Yes, we both are so busy. Yeah. It's yeah, this week has been crazy. crazy. No, I'm doing all right. I'm tired. I am. Uh, yeah, yesterday was a bit exhausting. I so it was a long day. Yeah, very long day yeah. for multiple reasons. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I'm doing all right. Uh, had to rewatch the episode just to have it fresh in my mind today I because barely remember it, but I'm sure we'll chop through somehow. Yes, we will. There's some some great scenes. Yeah, some reminiscent scenes, some really, uh, really good scenes on this week's discovery. Um, well, how was your Thanksgiving? Oh, it was good. Yeah, we uh, drove up to Massachusetts on Thanksgiving morning, mm-hmm. and then went to my brother-in-law's sister's house with a bunch of family. And that's right. Um, yeah, and uh, it was good. Yeah, Dennis was a huge hit. With as usual the, yes so yeah it was good uh get to spend a couple of days with the kids and my sister and yeah it was really good had a great talk with my sister when we came back from thanksgiving um mm-hmm. dennis and my brother-in-law ed both passed out and so my sister and i were up drinking and just talking <laughs> so That's nice yeah it was good yeah it was really good so we chatted about everything going on and yeah it was good did you Um, did you two get anything really good for black friday oh so yeah so you mean the two-hour trek to rentham outlets yeah (laughs) and uh, um yeah i mean i got some you know i got some nice jeans uh a couple a t-shirt and a sweater Mm mm-hmm those were the highlights for me. But Dennis got a new work bag from oh, yeah, Toomey. Oh, yeah, I saw a um, work bag, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it, you know, it was fun. You know, it was, I wouldn't, it was hellish traffic. And I bet. It, oh, you know, I, I could have found a slightly faster probably way to get there, but really wasn't thinking about it. Because I do know the area. It's, I just forgot about another way to get there. And uh, by the time... I thought of it, which was like, I don't know, 45 minutes into the two hour drive. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're talking a two hour drive for like five miles. Oh, God. Like, I, I mean, it was, it was maybe not five miles, but yeah, I mean, yeah, it was 
probably five, five, maybe, maybe eight miles away. Yeah. It was pretty crazy. So, but it was good. You know, I mean, we, we just, yeah, we chatted and sat in traffic and it was what it was. If you didn't have the dog, would you have taken like the Amtrak? Oh, um, I don't know. I don't know. I think we still would have driven up. Okay. Yeah. No, I think, yeah, it's, yeah. I, I mean, clearly riding alone, you know, riding in our little bubble or whatever is, um, you know, still preferable to riding with people. Sure. So, sure. you know, in the news today, you know, it's, uh, and it's pretty clear that Omicron or, yeah. I want to call it Unicron, but it's not. That's the Transformers enemy. Um, <laughs> Omicron, or I don't even know if it's Omicron. Is it Omicron? Omicron? I don't know. if it, I think it's Omicron. Okay. I don't know. Anyway, it's already here. I mean, not that we didn't expect it. This is New York City. Yeah. I mean, there are like, you know, course, hundreds, yeah. hundreds and hundreds of flights that come in here from all over the world every yeah. day. So Impossible. not surprising that it's already Impossible. here. Yeah. So totally. Um, so yeah. So I'm, I mean, I'm glad we drove up. Um, yeah, it was good. You know, it was a good trip. We came back Saturday night. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So Hamish continues to get sick on the on the drive up. Was- oh my god! I can't. <laughs> when you were like, he like threw up and pooped in the car. I was like, that's uh, that's disgusting. I would just have burned down the car and left it. <laughs> like that's gross yeah i mean yeah it i mean it wasn't as bad as we thought it was or i thought it was but yeah it was but the the drive was really smooth there was like next to no traffic we left at like eight o'clock nine o'clock in the morning next to no traffic got up there about 12 30 12 45 so it was a pretty smooth ride but other than uh hey michigan getting sick and there not being really any place to pull over oh god uh until we got well into connecticut into a knot so yeah but it was fine it was fine oh my god so i really can't have a dog i I can't live with this i can't (laughs) i can't um but good for you guys so how was your thanksgiving it was all right um i saw my mom we hung out probably for half a day too long because by the end they were screaming um (laughs) but it was fine um i definitely did a bit of Black Friday shopping. I'm a total coral junkie. So I bought oh, like all yes. this coral. I bought some fish. Um, I I did buy I did buy um like some random stuff on Amazon. I bought a jacket from Zara. So oh, there okay. was that. So yeah, I definitely spent money. Um it was wow. It was, it was uh yes, definitely expenditures happened. But you know it was good. It was it was relaxing. I it was nice to just have like a good handful of days where I didn't have to think about work. Yeah, it was it was good. Yeah, but now yeah, we're back, and it's like it never happened. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it yeah, never happened, and crazy. now it's just like waiting for Christmas. Oh yes, you guys Which have off, right? You, you have you have off between Christmas and New Year's. Uh, yeah, I'm going to work one day. Um, okay. That's really it between Christmas and New Year's. Uh, I've still got two personal days to take. Got it. So, and those I expire. Have 20. The end of- I have like 20 personal days. Well, but- no. So these are personal, personal days, not PTOs. Oh, okay. So you have, you know, we have sick time, we have personal time and we have vacation time. Oh, got it. So the personal days expire in the year that they're given so we have three uh, personal days a year so okay okay um so yeah so i'm gonna take two of those work one day and then i have monday and friday already off so um, cool yeah i guess i'm doing anything i don't know oh no i mean he's uh dennis has to work and yeah, yeah so yeah i you know i will probably just uh relax and catch up mm-hmm. on some reading and watching TV relaxing nice that yeah. sounds great yeah cool um, yeah we have to figure out what we're gonna do for this little old po- podcast through the holidays I mean I guess you're gonna be around right so we could I'll be around and 
Discovery is going to keep on going. So. Oh, that's true. Yep. Yeah. You know, we'll figure it out. I'm sure. Yeah. We'll work through See, it. It's, it's, not, well, like, it's no, not like I'm going it's anywhere. Good. I say my mom for a few yeah. days, but that's it. So. Yeah, okay. Yeah. We'll figure it out. Um, cool. cool. So we do have some things to talk about. So why don't we get into this week's, well, really last week's at this point, last week's Discovery episode, Anomaly. Hey. Hi, sorry. Um, I just wanted to thank you uh, for your advice, uh, Adira. It can be hard for them to let others see past how bright they are. You have a very uh, light touch with people. I really admire that. You do too, usually. Yeah, I think um, you were right about me feeling pressure. Um, not about the station, but I mean, don't get me wrong, that was just unbelievably shitty, but... Um, but this is something bigger? Yeah, like, things just don't feel the same way that they used to, like, I don't know, something's off or um, I'm off. Uh, I don't know, I was kind of hoping that we could talk about it sometime. Like, talk, talk, like, uh, professionally. Of course. And whatever it is, we'll figure it out together. Hmm? Okay, <laughs> that wasn't so hard. <laughs> Just a little, a little awkward, not, but not hard. You did good. Thank you. <laughs> I wanna go dig into that data. All right. All right. Go save the world. No, oh, I will. Cool. So um, yeah, I barely remember this episode. I mean, I'm sure my memory will jog as we talk about it. Um, but Mike, why don't we start with you? Because that will help me since you actually just rewatched it. What did uh, you think of Anomaly and what were some of the standouts for you in this episode? I would love to know. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I would say that this is one of the most stressful episodes maybe in all of Discovery. I don't know. What? Really? Yeah, I feel, I felt like it was really stressful. Oh, man. And, and it just like things just kept on getting ratcheted up in level you know uh, definitely uh, a lot going on here so the most uh stressful episode for me i it's such a random episode but it stands out to me so well um i don't know how well you remember it season one episode oh season one throwback yep. when they when um michael uh was on the klingon ship remember oh and they yeah were, they were jumping, they had to jump around it 133 times. And, oh, yeah, yeah. And you had Admiral Cornwell was there. Um, yep. Vox slash whatever. She was, she was, he was there. Yeah. Um, but Michael had to like duel it out. And then um, Stamets had to like hold on. It was like, there was a lot going on in that episode. That was like fucking stressful. Wow. Yeah. That's a, that's a huge throwback. So that's when you think of stressful, that is. It was just like a lot okay. going on. There's a lot going on, a lot of action. Um, it was but similar, I think, to what you're saying. It was just like there was a lot of layers of tension um, happening. Like the thing is, for me here, um, I didn't think Bob was going to die or anything. Like, you know, I, I, I certainly didn't think so. There were like no like, um, like big. Um, I mean, I kind of felt like that that was a possibility, not that it, you know, not that it w would happen, but I, I, I felt the, I felt the, the possibility. And I, huh. I think that that's what the, the writers wanted to create, right? Was this, you know, whether, you know, whether Michael could get through to book and kind of ground him and bring him back or not. Interesting. Uh, I felt, I felt, that. felt real. Yeah. I mean, I, I really felt like. Yeah, well, so, you know, coming off of last week and just seeing how shell-shocked Book mm. is um, and Michael, Michael just Justifiably. feeling lost. Justifiably. Yeah, oh, yeah, yes. absolutely. No no doubt about it. He's, his homeworld was destroyed. His nephew and his brother were are presumably dead, um, mm -hmm. as as most of the people the of Quajonians. Quajonians. Yes, I, I was trying to think if we could call them 
Quajanians, Quajanians, the Quajans. Uh, but uh, so there's that. But also, she, Michael doesn't know how to get through to him. Mm-hmm. So there's that piece of it. Um, yeah, there's just there's a lot of conflict. Uh, conflict that you know, n- not not headbutting conflict, but definitely some like what what's she gonna do? She's torn between being a captain and being a partner, right? Uh, to book and uh, you know, um. I, I think that it just, you didn't know what was going to happen. I mean, you put Stamets and Book together, which never happened. I love that. That I was love, good. I love that. That was really good. Yes. Um, that was like have... a, uh, <laughs> that was like a Tilly and Mariner kind of situation where it's like, we don't know each other at all. <laughs> like we never talk. We never have a not Tilly, uh, not Tilly. It was um, oh my god, um, yeah. it was um, Tendy, Tendy, goodness, Tendy, Tendy. Ooh, Nirvana. getting your Star Trek. I at least remember her first name, Tendy Nirvana. and Mariner. So goodness, Tilly. Um, yeah, no, yeah, it was definitely like that. That feeling. Um, we have the awesome return of Saru. Yep, Mister oh Saru, and Saru. So wow, cool. what a what a great dynamic. Doug Jones and, and Sonequa and Martin Green have in this episode. Yeah, she needs uh, him so desperately. Like, I yeah, well, like so we talked about, there. she didn't really have anyone to balance her out and give her, um, give her the perspective that she needed to be a better captain. And uh, yeah, right away she she relies on him, and he, you know, I thought all of that was great. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, that's what Michael needed. I felt. You know, it definitely brings more balance to to the ship. Um, and then then, you know, my part of my one of my favorite scenes is Tilly and Saru walking down the corridor. That was a great very scene. reminiscent of last season when he he was talking to her as her as his first officer. Mm-hmm. So it had that very reminiscent feeling and uh, just her awkwardness with him and um which i just i just thought it was excellent just so excellent that the that scene was just really great um and so i like how like he like it was a small gesture but he put his hand on her back as it entered the turbo lift mm. um it was just it was just nice it was like you know saru was there to listen and to you know say the right things or not say the right things and just listen and like grant wisdom yeah. you know it's like he's so great he's so great yeah he okay. is he's he's like the uh he i mean he has earned not that he didn't need to but he earned that pin that he wears that is a uh, venerated elder or whatever it is mm-hmm. for kaminar and um yeah it was just great to have him back uh then we have you know we have Oh, so the elephant in the room that we haven't talked about is uh, uh, Stamets' joke about being shoved out an airlock. It was funny. It was Uh, like too soon. (laughs) Yeah, it was it was an interesting. um, Yeah, just an interesting perspective. So there was some speculation on on another podcast that perhaps a book might explain talk about the first five months of this journey because we're five months in right, right since the finale and uh so maybe there's some more conflict i think we all expected a ton of conflict between. i definitely expected more conflict between um michael and stamets but i guess they i they kind of almost addressed it here in some way with a joke and, I, and yeah and then I feel they're ready to kind of just move on. You know? Yeah, I mean, we thought that that was one of, I mean, everyone thought that, I thought was, that was going to be the, set up for like a major ongoing yeah. conflict for this yep. season. But major drama of this season. And, and it's, I feel like so, I kind of decided to just whatever. <laughs> like, yeah. Fine. So maybe it'll be covered in a book. Who knows? Um, not that, you know, you need to know that, but it was an, I guess it was acknowledging the last season and then we're moving forward and, right. uh, you know, the awesome and amazing Wilson Cruz and as Dr. Culber mm-hmm. had some great scenes. Uh, yeah, this... Culber and uh, Saru were really great in this episode because they yeah. basically went around like fixing people, <laughs> like, you yeah. know, yeah, reassuring people. Jobs. Yeah, just yeah. reassuring people, being there, listening, guiding. 
uh yeah the count you know basically the counselor and the first officer of discovery and uh yeah thank thank uh thank the gods for them uh um so yeah i think that we we touched on like a zillion different things so maybe we yeah. can um to order our thoughts i think it would be good to maybe look at the episode like from even from the beginning like when obviously they're um looking at the, you have the little council at federation headquarters oh yeah right, right yeah and yeah. they're evaluating the anomaly and then book comes in i don't like he just, he just strolls in i you know I, I thought that was interesting because he's not he's not a member of starfleet so yes go in like with everybody else and it's awkward um but i thought that that was well, it was awkward because they were about to show the explosion at Quajon. Right. Quajon getting destroyed. Uh, getting wiped out by this anomaly. So, yeah. And, uh, but also, the president did say that it's for, you know, Federation and non federation This briefing was right. for Federation and non federation. So it wasn't yes. too, too. And obviously, he. But yeah, like most, senior people. I guess like Book is the last member of his race, potentially, or, you know, at least representative. Yep. So maybe he gets some clout. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I, think I did like that scene a lot because uh, you know I love, uh, you know Miss Navarre, Miss President of Navarre. I'm sure. Um, you know, yes. I think we President get more of her in episode three, but I yeah. I love her. Um, so I'm, yeah. I love that we get a little bit of her, and I love that we get just a you know these shots of these like Federation and non Federation members. We got our first shot of a Frankie captain. Yes, I was like, that's great. Um, yeah, yeah uh, that was a that was a great little scene. Um, I'm still a big fan of Miss Federation President. I know you have mixed feelings, but I think she's great. I do have mixed feelings. Uh, you know, yeah, uh, but I, I think it's fine. You know, I think she's she's uh, doing what she needs to do. And yeah, um, yeah. And I, I, mean, I have questions about this anomaly. So it's five light years across. But right. I'm like, okay, great. But going back to even what I was saying last week, I mean, I feel we need to know more about this not only because it's like, does it travel faster than light? Because if it doesn't, because that has not been established. If it doesn't travel faster than light, it's like, it, it's not really a threat. It, it was, it's going to take forever to go anywhere. Um, even at the speed of light, actually. Even at the speed of light, it's going to take forever to get anywhere. You know, so I, I need more information um, about not only the anomaly, but also the science consultants and what they're doing. But, you know, we'll see. Yeah, I mean, you know, so the, the theory, right, was that there are two black holes circling one another. Right. And they're sort of like proceeding through Which the Which isn't that unusual, by the way, to, for two black holes to be circ circling one another um, in at least in the... In the, in the galactic scale of things scale okay yeah. so yeah. i mean that's i i mean i yeah i assume that the science is pretty that they've gotten some rather rather solid science behind this somewhat maybe maybe but the the thing about we, that we learn is that well twofold we learn that when they get there to the anomaly mm -hmm. it is only a single black hole or it's one object it looks like one object it's yeah, something. but they said it's not what they expected. They they, they assumed it was two black holes. It's yes, not it right not. now. Right. Um, and then at the end, we find that it changes course. Right. On its by some unknown. Right. Function. So, I actually, when I watched it again today, I was like, I wonder what Johnson will think about this from a scientific perspective, because, uh, you know, clearly that's. It's it seems scientific, right? They're going to attack it from a, a scientific perspective, mm -hmm. but it no longer seems like a natural phenomenon, like a scientific right. phenomenon. And so, you know, last year they pulled the storyline from a Ursula Le Guin story. I'm wondering where they're pulling this story idea yeah. from. And not that I'm I'm not a well of science fiction, you know, historical you know ideas or whatnot so I, i'm thinking that this is probably something that has been out there before maybe maybe not um 
But I think that we're going to find that there's some other cause to this anomaly, right? Probably. probably. I mean, like, I think that it's hard to... The thing is, with just, like, a scientific mystery, I feel if there's no... If there's no kind of face behind it, it kind of is... I feel that it only goes so far in terms of the drama and tension it causes. Because I think that's what the point... I think that's what they might be pointing to. It's like, if it is... It, it shouldn't just like change direction without any sort of reason. Um, right. You have like weather patterns, right? Like for example, and there's reason why hurricanes move in a certain direction. There's, there's like, you know, there's natural causes to it. It's predictable to a certain extent. Right. Um, yep. But if it just moves in an unexpected direction, there's probably like cause behind it. Like someone is doing something, you know? So I won't be surprised if at the end of the day, it's like being, someone's behind it or some entity behind it who knows yeah you know uh, it brings me so some things some ideas came up for me like is this a is this the universe being torn apart by the warp fields that have been generated and this is the result of that which would be like a sort of a climate justice perspective from you know as from, as always star trek is trying TNG to... season seven days yes is that what is that, that it what, what was the name of that episode uh, you would you're the uh repository of those informations uh I don't but while you look that up while you look that up there's so there's that idea in my head like is this like suddenly did 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 the reintroduction of dilithium and warp suddenly initiate something again that uh was always bound to happen which is the collapse of you know the subspace or whatever it was force of uh, nature so force, of nature. force of nature there you go so there's that idea in my head there's also um what was the other idea that it came to my mind um so there's that and you know what part of me what why i think that is is because remember in the first episode we get that they're starting to explore other means of traveling the galaxy hmm, okay. so yeah. i thought that that's a little bit more than um then a hint, you know, it could be, you know, it could be an indication of more to come, you know, why, I'm why, considering... why that? Yeah. So, yeah. So we'll, we'll kind of see, I, I thought I had one other idea about it, but I, you know, I, I've, I feel like there's a, there's going to be some sort of um, metaphor or uh, lesson yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're going to sure. try to learn from this. Yes. Uh, learn, there, learn there is some, there's, there's some cause to this. Right. And, Right. Um, what is what is the what is the cost of all of this going to be? So, um, so yeah, they'll figure so, out by the end of the season. But that's also why um, why I felt like the episode had been ratcheting up, you know, with everything through this episode because it you know gets quiet towards the end, and then Tilly brings to Saru this problem, this new problem. Mm -hmm. And they're like, we have no idea scientifically why this would do it, right, be doing right. this. So, yeah. you know, there, so there's that whole, you know, we're, we're gone, we've gone from a five, five light year long, wide, whatever, mm -hmm. uh, phenomenon to something that is even more unexplainable scientifically. Sure. Uh, so there's that, uh, yeah. So we'll yeah, see. I, yeah. I, yeah. I think, yeah, so um, we'll see where that kind of takes us. Yeah. I still think, though, that if it's not traveling faster than the speed of light, it doesn't really pose a threat to much, too many things. So we'll see. I guess. Maybe maybe they'll address that. They just need to say maybe? it. They just need to say it. Like, oh, it's traveling faster than the speed of light. Then I'll be like, okay, great. Then it's like, then they, I believe it will be a threat. But I don't think it is because, obviously, Discovery is at, like, a sub sublight speed. They're not at warp when they're yeah. chasing it. So yeah, I yeah, you know, I I don't know because then it really isn't a threat to many things. I mean, it's still a problem, but it takes light. But you know, even if it was trying to be a light, it would take forever to get anywhere. Like yeah, really, so that's really, a good really question. I don't, you know, yeah, how is so. it travel? I mean, it's clearly traveling through space at some speed. Yeah. Um, so. Yes, anyway, we don't, we don't need to go down that rabbit hole. Um, so yes, yeah, so we get that scene and then we get back to Discovery where they are ordered to jump to um, look at the anomaly and they're like, oh, it's not 
like you're saying it's not two black holes it's something else um yeah. and this is where i think we get a lot of the scenes this is where we get the setup of the scene with book and stamets um yeah. and stamets kind of being hologram form on book ship and um yeah i really liked um just to go back to this point i really liked um how we unpacked the their relationship non-relationship but also the awkwardness of it um i really yeah. did enjoy that i i really found that to be touching when um stamets eventually came to the realization of why he felt awkward with book which was that book was the one to save his family when he couldn't be in that position to do so i really like yeah. that you know I, because i think yeah. stamets didn't even realize it until he processed it um out loud with book right yeah and 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 michael had nothing to do with that I mean, right. they, she, he didn't bring her up. Like she was not part of this conversation. So it really, um, yeah, I think it took the even more wind out of the sails of their kind of supposed conflict uh, yeah. from season from the end of season three. So yeah, so the, the, there's that whole storyline, and then we've got the Adira um, Gray storyline, which is touched on this new Gollum. That yeah, which is make kind of like. I don't know how are you feeling about the um I, I do want to ask you how you feel about the Adira and Gray storyline. I, I do want your thoughts on that. I uh, I'm I, I love the connection to Picard. I, I know it's yes, and it's that not, was fun. It's not it's not forced. It's and it's it's sort of hit very treated very historically. Right. Um obviously we're we're talking and about color helping... is like, oh yeah, some admiral named picard like he wouldn't know picard you know like yeah he was before picard he you know most of the experience is before picard so yeah all he knows and it's interesting because like, my my thought was what's gonna happen when q changes the timeline <laughs> and like how does it, how is this gonna affect discovery in the 32nd century so uh, um you know we'll probably never know it's probably off scene but our off screen uh so yeah i i am um, I'm excited to see what they do with this. I think that this gives this idea of giving um, Gray a body and transposing his consciousness, which is alive and well in Adira, uh, to to him to to them um, to this golem. I think is a really interesting storyline about trans visibility and. Um, also, the whole idea of like choosing your body and how you want to display it, and you know all the all those issues that, you know, frankly, I'm not the person, not the most, edu you know, not the smartest person about this, um, but I think it's a great um, metaphor for for that, and I think I think it's a great way to educate people on this on trans visibility and. Uh, that whole topic. So I think it's really good. I, I also think it's going to be interesting when this all happens, uh, when Adira loses Gray being always there. Right, right. How is that going to impact her? And where are we going to take that storyline? That's going to be interesting, I think, for, for from here. So there's that. I You know, I, I think... I, I mean, I like this dynamic. I, I mean... Culber said he was definitely going to bring, do everything he could to give Gray form. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, I think that it was the nice touch about it too was the whole idea of, you know, removing the mole and, and just being able to choose your own body. I think that's, uh, that's a great um, example. So it's, We'll see how it kind of plays out. I, I think it's not going to be fraught. I don't think it's going to be smooth. I, I think it's going to be fraught with mm -hmm. challenges and and some good good dialogue and good drama. And you know, I'm interested to see the family of Culber and Stamets and Adira, and then now and bringing Gray to life for them because Gray uh, Stamets has never met Gray, mm -hmm. so there's that. Only Saru and Culber have met Gray. Right. 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 Um, I and I guess oh no, Michael had already left, so Michael has not met Gray at all either. No, so. I think yeah, I think only Culber has met Gray. 
right? So I, I guess this I, this Culber and Saru. Uh, Saru, yes, yeah, Saru did too. Yes. Uh, so I, I'm hoping that we won't suffer any like sacrifices of you know Gray being sacrificial to to help save something towards the end of the season or whatever. I hope that won't happen. I hope. No, that, I don't think so. I do feel uh, that, like, um, for me, I, I do feel that the it, it felt a little bit to me. It felt like kind of having an aside with um, Gray and Adira and the Golem felt a little bit forced to me. Like we kind of have to like visit them <laughs> to see how the progress is going. It, it felt very because all the other things are happening felt very connected to this main storyline, whether it is Tilly and um, like Til- Til- Tilly and Adira and their attention. And I loved, by the way, this is for this is another piece of conversation, like Tilly basically almost echoing what we were talking about last week, which is she felt lost. Like, you know, she doesn't know her place. I love that scene, by the way, between her and Culber. Um, yeah, but I do too. These- well, there are two scenes actually, and they're both excellent. But, so there's um, the one where she's asking for help, and then there's the one where he's advising her after she's snapped at Adira. Right. Yes. So, um, um, so he does he does a great job with that. Yeah, I I can see that, but I also think that. So I think this gives Adira and Gray a storyline. Tilly's definitely going to have her own storyline, which I'm super excited to see how that develops. Uh, you know, Stamets uh, has committed to book to figuring this all out so i think mm-hmm. that that's sort of his storyline like how is he going to deliver to book sort of to pay back it's uh, the way that i'm looking at it now is he's going to do everything he can mm-hmm. to pay back book for saving his family uh now that he realizes that now that the realization and sure. all that is clicked in sure so there's that piece you know there's michael and her ongoing tension with the president um, there's Saru and his being torn between Kaminar and Starfleet, um, you know, and then hopefully we'll weave in some other, you know, characters, uh, storylines. You know, I, I yeah, know yeah, that no, we I, haven't... I think it's fine. Like, yeah, I, I don't disagree that everyone's like kind of on their own journeys. I just felt that for this episode, it felt a little bit disconnected because all, they did a really great job kind of weaving in everyone else's experiences and their individual journeys to this larger narrative that's happening yeah. with this gravitational anomaly and the structure of Quajon. That's what I'm saying. Um, obviously, okay. everyone has their own growth areas, blah, blah, blah. It just felt a little bit, um, as an aside, um, mm-hmm. I would love for it to, you know, eventually weave in more organically. It just felt like, you know, we have, like, plots A, B, C, D, E, and we have to, like, visit plot E really quickly to make sure that's, you know, it's like watering the plant, making sure that it's, like, growing, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. I, I do actually think, um, I'll be honest, I, I actually think that this storyline is um, one of the ones that I'm actually least invested in. Um, it's hard for me to say why. Actually, um, you know, I like, a, I like Adira and I, but um, in terms of Grey, I am not particularly invested in Grey as a character. Um, I think, I don't know if that's because most of the interactions that we have with Grey has just been with Adira, where we see Adira have, you know, just due to nature of who Adira is and who Grey is, have much more connected relationships with everyone else, while Mm -hmm. Grey definitely at the moment is really, it's almost like, like, they're almost like an accessory um, to Adira. So, yeah, I... Am I while well, I appreciate it, particularly from a representation standpoint, um, I'm not feeling it. Um, it's fine. I'm glad it's there. Um, but I'm actually more invested in Book, who is not really one of my favorite characters. It's fine. Um, I'm more invested in his journey right now because of obviously the the larger tie to the larger plot of the season, right? Um, then, then Gray's story, which will be fine. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure that to your what you're saying, I'm sure there'll be, um, it's, it's probably going to be, we're probably going to get some, um, echoes of, 
uh, what Stamets uh, and Culber went through, you know, when Culber came back and like, remember, and then it, there was, it was awkward because it was like, they had a very specific time relationship before and then Culber died and then came back. And then it was like, he had to find himself. I'm, I feel there's probably going to be a little bit of that um, with Gray coming back and, oh, I have a new body and, you know, I'm not tied to just a deer anymore. And, he, you know, he's going to have to find his own place. Um, so. Yeah. We'll and how that affects Adira, which is actually for me, more of an interesting piece of this is how that's going to affect it. And whether, you know, Stamets can kind of guide her through that, having been through that with Culber, but maybe, you know, maybe that's going to be the tie between the two of them and, and, and mm -hmm. him maybe not doing a great job or not being able to do it at all because he's trying to save the galaxy. Uh, so there's, you know, I think that we might see some, some of old Stamets rear its head a little bit and, and be a little bit more focused on work than family. And so I think that it's, it's probably going to be an interesting, it could be a very interesting discussion about finding a balance between work and, 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 and mm -hmm. personal life, you know, work-life mm -hmm. balance. Um, well, I again, feel like Culver's going to be, I feel Culver's going to be kind of the mother hen figure. While Stamets is off trying to figure out this anomaly situation, Culver's yeah. going to be there to make sure that um, their adoptive family, children family kind of, you know, that he's helping the emotional ups and downs. Yeah, uh, I, I think it'll be interesting. Um, you know, yeah, it's going to be, I think it's, I think it's got potential. And I think you're right. We need to see, you know, Gray is a hard character to be invested in because other than, you know, feeling, feeling great about the representation aspect of it. Mm -hmm. I think that it is one of the characters that we know the least about. It's very right. tied to Adira. Right. You know, we, we still don't know a lot about Adira. You know, we'll see where um, at this, this dynamic between them goes. I am even though it's not the, at least for me, I don't have that emotional investment in what is happening. I am definitely, I agree with you. I'm, I'm definitely interested to see where it goes. In the meantime, I think that we get a lot of great scenes with Adira and Adira making efforts to really impress Tilly. And that I really, I really like those moments where Tilly was just like not having it. Tilly was having a bad day. And Tilly had to also recognize that Adira was kind of like in, like, because I think Adira is essentially Tilly season one this season. So I agree that Adira is very much like Tilly of season one, awkward and trying to find their place yeah. in the crew and in the ship. So they're on that journey that we saw Tilly on. We still don't know what Tilly's journey is going to be this season. So, uh, you know, I don't know if she can help them with this eventually after she deal after Tilly deals with her own stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know, hopefully she'll be able to help uh, Adira adjust and, and figure this out, you know, as well. So, yeah, I think both of their journeys are going to be interesting an interesting part, but I'm definitely excited about Tilly because I felt like Tilly has been off. Like it's, you know, from that scene that Tilly and Michael had very brief at Starfleet Academy that mm -hmm. really, you know, to Which me, it was really just one episode ago, but it really fell off for sure. Yeah. It felt off, you know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, Tilly is definitely dealing with uh, the repercussions of what happened in the end of season three so uh but there's something else going on and i'm 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 very interested in hearing figuring out what because i i you know what i need i need i need it i need tilly back like there's i think she's I'm, going through like almost it's almost like a quarter life crisis or something she's probably like what in her mid-20s like upper 20s maybe right she's probably yeah. like just like figuring things out like you know i i think tilly probably came in and she knew she wanted to be on the command track and she, you know, she was smart, awkward, but now that she's been kind of recognized for her ability to do shit, 
now she needs to probably figure out what she wants in some ways. Like, does she yeah, want to I think, down you know, path? That's certainly, you know, yeah, she's not the yeah. awkward ensign anymore. Um, she's now a lieutenant, but what does that mean? I'm sure there's like a lot of, you know, a lot of people in their 20s, early 30s go through like existential questions like that. Yeah, that's true. Uh, you know, that's a good, good point. Um, yeah, I mean, we'll see. I, I think that, yeah, Tilly, Tilly is sort of the heart of this show in a lot of ways for me. And uh, the emotional heart, you know, like, uh, so I I really want to see, you know, I want to see her come back and be strong again. And, you know, so I actually think that we're seeing the repercussions of season three in Tilly now, Mm -hmm. plus what you say, I think about searching for your purpose and your, what you're, what you're, you want to do. But I think she's also dealing with some recent failures that are probably sort of plaguing her. This is one thing so, I do like about Discovery where, um, you know, as much as I complain about Discovery sometimes, I, I do love these more nuanced um, character development areas where they recognize that certain people just kind of feel this lot, like the sense of like being unsure or, mal- or even malaise, right? It's a very, like, I think we oftentimes can feel that sense of malaise in our lives and we just don't know what's next. We don't know where we are where we stand and it's a very nuanced um, thing to kind of feel and talk about, which I, so that's one thing I actually really like that um, I feel that that's probably what Tilly may be feeling. Um, it's just like uh, trying to figure out where you belong, right? And it's not like you're like completely lost and it's not like you're in a bad place, right? It's not like an extreme where you're like, gone home passionate or you're like completely like lost. It's kind of like, you're kind of just coasting or you're kind of just you know you're you're going along right um and I feel that that's almost where Tilly is right now yeah no uh, that's a great great point so uh, let's uh I'm looking forward to seeing where that goes um anything else that we can think about for this episode I mean no oh, yeah we didn't even talk about like really much the the action scenes um I thought that they did I mean, there's a, have you noticed that there are like basically these vents in the back of the bridge that just spew fire? The, That's like their sole yes. purpose. I was just about to tell, say that to you. Yes, like I noticed that so many they're, times. They're, they're just there to like spew fire. And I don't know where the yes. rocks are coming from. I don't know if they also shoot rocks out, but it's like there's like pebbles and rocks and fire. And that's all the yes. vents do. <laughs> Uh, I actually, uh, it's almost yes, like a little too I, much. It's a little like literally, it is it's a, like pyrotechnics. It is like it is, yeah, it's it's pyrotechnics for the sake of pyrotechnics. And I think right. it Every actually time is like a bump. It's like there's fire, yeah. right? Yeah, it's just uh, it's it's too much and it's not the right kind of explosions. Uh, you know, it, it just doesn't feel right. Yeah, it really it actually. I, I really was impressed with the obviously the stunt work that was in this yeah, episode, very cool. which is really good. But I really felt like the pyrotechnics and the explosions around it were sort of too much extra. It was so extra. It's yeah, it's, and, and not really realistic. I mean, you know, you didn't you didn't even in bookship. I think that there was a there was a little bit of a level. Well, you know, from the first episode. Well, even for this up, there wasn't really any crashes in this episode, but they sort of, you know, I thought it was a little bit much when Book revisited the explosion that sent him, you know, when he got up to the the planet explode, the moon exploding in front of him, and he got hit, like that whole explosion. Yeah, just I think that they're overdoing it on the pyrotechnics this year a little bit too much. A little too much, uh, and it doesn't. It's not making. It's not making the for me. It's not making it feel any more real. It's no. not, it's not, it's not contributing to the, to the reality of. It's the, not adding to the drama of it. Like, no, it's not. It, it's just really I think crazy. that the, the, the losing the gravity, I think that that was great. Um, you know, I think that if something's going to explode or, you know, there's got to be a, a, a reason for that. Like things just don't spew fire because you, you're getting hit by some rocks or a wave, you know, like, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah. You know, it's, so, they made like too much money to burn, so they're like, let's just put it into like fire and like pebbles or something. Yeah, it's just it's not really adding a lot for me. Uh, yeah, I was actually distracted by that and not 
not impressed. I thought it t- it actually took me out of the story. Like it made me believe that they were on a set and not actually like experiencing this in space. Like it just felt too. It's just too much. Yeah, it, it was too it much. So yeah, I totally wanted to bring that up. Yeah, when you when you mentioned the 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 action sequences, I mean this the stunt work is amazing, but the explosions are too much, yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I, so there's that. Uh, what other action sequences are there? I mean, that's primarily the bri- lot of bridge action sequences. And also, the, you know, one of the things other than the bridge scene, really, we're, we've been looking at this for a while, are these intimate scenes with two characters. And I think that we're really seeing that as being part of the COVID um, experience of filming. Um, oh, good point. That's interesting. You know, yeah. so there's a ton of two people scenes and that's it you know mm-hmm. not even a lot of background uh not no background actors really maybe maybe one um but not a lot of background actors and, and a I lot think more the over- scene with the most people would be that council scene when they have that meeting yep yeah but all you know all spread out which is obvious and you know who knows how many people were you know in in that filming at a time you know Sure. Yeah. So, digitally inserted. Who knows? Well, you know, it could just cut appropriately. Um, and then, yeah, or, and digitally put together, whatever it is. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, I think we're seeing, I, I'm liking these two people scenes. Like the Saru and Michael scenes are really great. The Michael and Book scenes are great. The Tilly and Saru, like Colburn, Tilly with Adira, you know, just, or Adira and Colbert. Like everything is two people scenes. And I yeah, think that. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I, I've been paying more attention to the overhead announcements in Discovery. Oh, yeah, uh, I've been noticing that, too. Yeah, so they've funny. been doing that like a lot more. more. Season for some reason. Yeah, I think it's to create that feeling. They, they can't create that feeling with people in the background. So they have to. That's the way that they're creating the, the idea that this is a living, breathing ship with mm-hmm. characters on it you know that yeah, i think there's one about like oh there's security drills or something i don't even remember yeah was, yeah you know. yeah it was there was some interesting kind of i don't know odd yeah announcements this is a security briefing in five minutes or yeah something. yeah something like that i yeah so yeah I totally so been I think, that. yeah so i mean I, while i like the two people scenes i i think that it's yeah i think what we're the stuff that we're seeing is it's different it's a different uh different experience obviously we've heard that from the actors so at star star trek las vegas uh and and in interviews so right, i mean it's right. the number one question that every everyone is asking in interviews is what was it like filming and right. uh so we we know that it's no it's no longer new news and i hope that any future i remind me if we ever get to interview someone about season four that i don't ask that question yeah um so uh, i mean it's clear that there are a lot of protocols in place rightfully so but um but they're doing a good job i mean you know i'm not um i'm not distracted by by that i mean i'm enjoying like you're saying i am enjoying some of these more intimate scenes because we're getting a really a lot of really great conversations out of it so yeah you know i i'm i'm there for it yeah absolutely yeah um oh and uh we also get like uh Bryce has like a moment. Like I'm like, yeah, yeah, Bryce. he Good does. Job. Yeah, yay Inputs. for Bryce. Yes, yeah. uh, he's actually he actually got to give a, a on the a on Instagram. He he get, got to uh, he he gives it obviously in the show, but then you know the Star Trek logs Instagram. He actually got to do a personal log about sharing that experience. Oh, cool. Yeah, so uh, hopefully we'll get to see more of Reese and and Awoshika. We say that and, every year. <laughs> like it's like every year we're like, hopefully we'll get like a little bit more of the rest of the senior staff. Like yeah, yeah. I mean it's hopefully like, we it's will. like it comes in drips and drabs, but you know yeah yeah I hope I hope we get more. I mean it's it's a hope. I mean so far we haven't really been delivered on that too too much. Well, we got Reese in the captain's chair for like five minutes. Yeah, so that was cool. Yeah um bryce got a moment in episode two maybe each episode they'll you know someone <laughs> like everyone will get a moment yeah so yeah so um yeah i mean that those are you know that's a lot to talk about for 
for uh, this episode. Uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think we went through most of it. Yeah, most stakes are even yeah. higher by the end. And uh, yeah, which is, you know, uh, when you think about it, like, gosh, th- this crew needs a vacation. No. Already. I know. Um, it, they need a break. All right. Well, I think that does it for Anomaly. Um, so why don't we move on to, we have more to talk about. So why don't we move on to some off topic? Sounds good. So why don't you start this one? Um, since you have your, your list of television shows that you've been watching and other things. Uh, wow. I mean, it's been a, I feel it's been a while since we talked about off topic. I mean, yeah. there's a lot since last time we spoke. I I finished the morning show and foundation, neither of which you watched, right? So I don't yeah, I did not I just I mean I I barely have time to watch what we do have and adding okay. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. I, I, I'm intrigued more and more about Foundation. I have not heard anything about the Invasion series. Oh my God. Don't bother. It's bad. I mean, I watched like I think we talked about it at the first I've watched the first three episodes. And right. it's so slow. It's like, where are the aliens? Like we had get yeah. some glimpses. And then I was and then I read reviews where they were like the whole season's like this. I was like, I can't do this. I was like, I can't. Yeah. I, I mean, I it, it's been that. pretty, pretty quiet on that front. Foundation uh, but, starts out a little slow, but it totally pays off at the end. It's excellent. Okay. We really liked it. I think Foundation is really the only one. I mean, other than I, I did, you know, Morning Show and Foundation would probably be the only reasons to do that. Maybe over the Christmas holiday, if, if I'm, mm-hmm. you know, caught up in everything else that, of course, we have, you know, stuff coming out right around is Christmas. Is there anything else on Apple anyway. TV? Because I might pause my subscription. <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure there's anything else noteworthy coming up yeah not that i've heard no so well there's that then um and i started watching succession because all my friends are like johnson you're not watching succession so i started watching succession and i like it it's one of those shows where you kind of dislike everyone so (laughs) i'm gonna have to like i don't know figure out like what i'm cheering for but it's good i mean it's hbo it's high quality you can see the dollar signs like it's like it's an expensive show you can tell and great actors brian cox is amazing i love brian cox um but everyone's unlikable this is the problem this is the only thing everyone's like unlikable so i don't know that's hard yeah you know yeah i can't get into a show if i can't like like yeah, you're not you have no you're not sure yeah there's no one to cheer for so yeah. um and as we've talked about i am watching cowboy bebop the live action version i am as i've said to you i'm crawling through that show i pause and then i'll do something else and then i it pauses for so long that netflix just decides Oh, you're not watching it anymore, and it'll just turn off because I, I cast it with Chromecast. So, oh, like, okay, I see. Just, it would just revert to like my screensaver or whatever. Whereas I watched it in two days and loved it, and then started it again last week. Yeah, um, I am appreciating it. I like the um, you know, there's definitely a lot of parallels to the anime, which I enjoy. Um, it's a little woke. <laughs> it's a little more woke than. Obviously, the anime is, um, given that it's 20 years after the anime. Yeah. Um, and we get, we, we both notice the same Star Trek Easter egg. Yes. Uh, which is really funny. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it is about Cowboy Bebop that is not, um, it's not drawing me in as much as it has for you. Hmm. Um. But at the same time, you know, I, I, I didn't even love the anime. Like, the anime I, I enjoyed, but, like, I, it's not an anime that I would be like, oh, my God. Like, it's my favorite anime of all time. So, I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I have three episodes left. I have three episodes left. It's, it's, it's good. Yeah, I mean, I think you already know that it's going to be different. Oh, yeah. Than the anime, how that For sure. plays out. So, yeah. 
so yeah, I, I can't wait to hear your thoughts as a 10 season arc uh, of this show, but I have episode loved. I, I loved it. I thought visually it was stunning. The storyline, we've talked a little bit about this. I don't really like the actor who plays vicious. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, and the reason why I don't like vicious in this, whereas I thought, and, and you have different thoughts on vicious versus I do, I do but, mm-hmm. um, but your, your points are valid, but I think, for me, it's too Clive Owen E. Owen E. Like why? Um, I know. Yes, I understand. Yes, um, it, he's just too much like a young Clive Owen, and you know what? I'm just tired of Clive Owen being the bad guy all the time. And interesting. Um, interesting. Uh, but it, yeah, I just also don't really. They they make a point to try to have a lot of Asian actors in in this, which I think is important. But then the the major villain of the show is not. And uh, have you? I'm trying to think where you are in the story. Have you seen the elders? And have yeah. they take has have the elders taken off their mask? No. Okay. Not yet. Not yet. Oh, okay. All it's right. okay. Um, so there's that that coming up that you'll be really excited about once okay. you see what happens. Uh, but. Yeah, I I really feel disappointed in the casting of Vicious, and and you mm-hmm. feel disappointed because he's not really as, uh, for lack of a better word, cool or cool, you know, cool. No. Yeah, Vicious in anime is definitely like a cool character. Like I said, he's like animatic. Yeah, but he's very like he keeps his cool. That's yes. a thing. Yeah. Meanwhile, this Vicious just goes off the handle. Yes, right. He does. He, like, yeah. Which is a very different depiction of yeah. of vicious. Which is why also why I have a problem with him. But I also just don't like. The- he's more. Car- he's like a cartoony villain. This is the problem. He's he's very like he's he's cartoonish versus the anime character while being cartoon, um, is very mysterious and yes. he's if anything he's he's very under the radar. Like he's not the over the top kind of guy. He you know he he's ruthless, but um he he never loses his cool yeah you know? yep that's a thing that's true. So, yeah i agree yeah that's meanwhile uh, this bitch just like choose a scenery to death you know yes he does that's so. for sure yeah so there's that but i i really like jet i like um jet's great i, I do like i do like john cho as as uh yeah i can agree yeah I, I wasn't I wasn't sure about John Cho. Obviously, I voiced that um, my my thoughts about John Cho. But he's not the thing about John Cho is that he's not trying to be Spike in. I don't think he's trying to be exactly like Spike in the anime. You know, yeah. he's like it's his own take on Spike, um, yeah. and it's kind of more human Spike. And yes. I'm fine with it. Yeah, I'm I am fine. too. And yeah. uh, John Cho looks amazing. Uh, yeah, physically yeah. yeah he looks good he, I, he super slimmed down for this role mm-hmm. and uh is ripped and yeah. uh but also slimmed down like not that he was ever a big guy but no but he, i mean that's a, that's actually good i mean spike in the anime he's not like ripped either he's he's just very lean you know he's yes, lean and live he's super right? lean yeah he's yeah. like more live than like um and he's agile than like big and bulky so yeah. i thought that um yeah, he he fits the role physically, and uh, I'm not. I don't really like the storyline of the big, the other big villain in this, which I can't think of his name, the uh, Le Fou Le Fool or the Fuel. I don't know. It's French. Which one is this? I don't know. The French, saying. the French guy, the French guy that with a paint white painted face. I don't um, know what you're talking about. Oh, okay. All right. So you'll see. Uh, I mean, I'm down to the last three episodes. I don't know who you're talking about. I mean, yeah, no. So they haven't. I forget. He comes in later in the season for oh, sure. Okay. okay. But it's the guy that floats and is super violent in the anime and um, is uh, you know, beats the crap out of Spike so many yeah. times. And he has a he has a shield like you can't get through. You can't shoot him because he's got this shield oh. that protects uh, i mean yeah so. i don't even recall his character in anime whatever 
I'll get there. Yeah, he's a pretty. I mean, he's a pretty major character in like I think two episodes of the anime. Maybe maybe oh. just one even, but I think it was more like two. Um, yeah, so you'll see it. I think once you finish it, you'll know what I'm talking about. But okay. I, I wasn't I wasn't super pleased with how they depicted that whole storyline. Okay. okay. Um, so yeah, um, and there's more to yeah. So once you finish it, we'll have a lot more to talk about. Okay. But anyway, okay. so that's Cowboy Bebop. Uh, anything else you're really watching? I mean, it's that and like I think it's mostly that and my fish tanks. Yeah, for right. the most part. I'm trying to think what else I'm watching. I want to watch. There's some stuff on anime that uh, anime. Uh, there's some stuff on Netflix I want to watch. I do want to watch some anime on Netflix. Um, but you may like. There's like this. Um, there's this anime series called Arcane. I don't know if you heard about it. It's like I've heard of it. Yeah, it's like a League of Legends anime. It's supposed to be amazing. So that is on my list. And yeah. then, um. Obviously, the expanse is right around the corner. Yes, it is. It comes, uh, it comes out in like a week. Away. Yeah, it's soon. Yeah. Yeah, so, I think. Yeah. So that's definitely coming up. Uh, yeah. Last season. So um, I'm very excited for that. But yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot of shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What else are you watching other than rewatching Cowboy Bebop? Well, I am. Uh, so we finished the Great British Bake Off, which was, <laughs> of course, I want to talk about that too. Yeah, and uh, it I was a shocking, it. shocking finale. Uh, I mean, it was literally the best cooks that they've probably ever had in a finale, wow. to be honest. Um, and uh, yeah, it was a shocking finale. I don't want to ruin it for anyone who hasn't watched it yet, although, okay. you know. It was clear. I mean, so it broadcast on Tuesday before Thanksgiving in the UK. And so I had to totally avoid any spoilers or anything Uh, for. And then we watched it, I think, Friday night after we got back to the the hotel. Oh, my God. Uh, Is that Netflix or is it on BritBox? It's on Netflix. Oh, okay. uh, but there's a definite delay and I, I was really hoping that they were going to put it on Wednesday before Thanksgiving, which I think would have been a good idea. Uh, but they didn't. So there's that. Um, I, you know, I'm in my Netflix queue. I've got to finish season three of Sex Education. I did start watching this sh- Korean show called Sisyphus. Um, I watched. Oh, yeah, you talked about that. Sex yeah. Education is amazing. Oh my god. I haven't. Uh, I haven't really gotten back to that. It's. I think it's. Just, well, it's like 15 episodes, and I, I just. Right. And they're like an hour long plus each, and it's a lot. Yeah. Um, so there's that. I mean, so we've also got Sex in the City coming back. Yes. Are you going to watch that? Yeah, I am. Yeah. I saw I'm the, the very full, full trailer for, for just like that. I'm very excited for it. I mean, I mean, you know, it's yeah, I just I'm I, I'm excited. I, I love Sarah Jessica Parker, so I'm excited to see it uh, from that perspective. Uh, yeah, it'll be interesting. There's there's the Expanse coming out. There's the Book of Boba Fett, which is coming out right. at the end of the month right um so much yeah um and probably stuff i'm forgetting i mean each other i'm trying to think if anything there's else so in HBO's. much shit there's so much shit like uh, yeah i mean it's like, i have been watching uh, on occasion i'm re-watching young justice on hbo oh wow okay yeah, right. I'm sort of I'm reinvested in that. Um, I, but I, I, I watched, watched so, like I, the first two seasons. Yeah, there's Young, four seasons. When it was on Cartoon Network, I think. Um, yeah, and yeah, it has to be like one of like the longest running shows with the fewest seasons. It's like it's taken so long to get a season four. It's just yeah, really yeah, and I, I I couldn't figure out where I left off, so I started all all over just oh, to man. get the whole storyline and God. um. So there's that, uh, yeah. I, you know, I haven't been watching a lot of Prime right now, but um, you know, that's uh, I did. I for nostalgia on one day off that I had, I watched an episode of Space 1999 just to see because I'd never watched it. It's a '70s uh, sci-fi show. I was like, I don't know what that is. Um, but the Expanse is coming back. I'm really, I'm ready for that. I think I need to like go back and maybe watch the last couple of episodes of season five. Oh my God, it's like riveting. Yeah, 
it was a yeah i think the you know maybe the last two or three episodes of season five will be a good prep oh for that God. riveting uh, slash harrowing and, with naomi, and with naomi. i also oh my God. yes oh with naomi yes wow yeah That's intense and then i haven't watched you know there's nothing really on disney except Hawkeye, which i have not yet watched and i, need I have to not watch that. watched hawkeye you said it's going to go yeah. reviews right I, I haven't even like I, I I've seen yeah I've seen nice. I've seen the you know people are saying it's it's really good um, but I have not watched it yet uh, yeah. so um, mm. yeah yeah so uh, there's that and I you know other than Boba Fett coming back or not coming back but um, coming out coming out that'll be that'll be great yeah uh, some more yeah. Star Wars uh, stuff there yeah. Um, yeah, so yeah, I, I mean that's primarily, and then and then I'm I'm finishing this uh, the trilogy of uh, Neil Schusterman's um, Scott Arc of the Skies. Um, oh, I'm and, watching Wheel of Time. I forgot about that. Oh time. yeah, yeah. Totally. I've not started that either. How, how are you? Are you liking that or no? Yeah. No. I mean. I'm liking it. The first, I, I think it premiered with like two episodes. I don't remember, um, which were good. It was like very much like set up. And then the last episode from last week, last Friday was very good. I was like, ooh, excellent. Um, so yeah, I'm liking it. Um, it's. Did it's, you read it? I forget. Did you read, read the books? I read seven no? books out of 14, and then I stopped. Okay. So you, do you remember the books at all? or I remember some elements of the books, yes. As, I, as I'm watching this, uh, some, of the, some of the plot pieces are coming back, yeah. Oh, okay. It's good. I mean, we can talk about it. You are going to watch it, right? You're probably going to watch it. Yeah, I'll probably watch it over the Christmas. Yeah, uh, no, Christmas. it's good. I have notes. <laughs> Of as course. I do but overall I'm enjoying it yeah. all right cool yes. yeah and then uh we're not going to talk about it this week but we are going to talk maybe next week we'll talk about it if we can schedule this a little bit better if our schedule is aligned to record but yeah, uh Coda book, two, Coda book two you finished right over thanksgiving so we can finally talk about that and book three is already out and i've started listening to that oh my god um so that is um we're, we'll definitely uh be talking about that on the list maybe, maybe next week uh and then you have to get started reading book three. Oh my god i do it's a lot it's like homework so, did you ever read speaking of reading did you ever read foundation did you ever read foundation no, the book? no i never read it so yeah. part of me wants to sort of read that before i watch the series just to... it's very different from what i hear because the honestly isaac asimov is kind of a dry writer yes um, i would agree that, with that he's very like cerebral obviously yeah. yes so yep. they pump up the action in the show they sure, add of course. Yeah. But I think they actually add mm -hmm. a lot of really cool concepts. We can talk about it after you watch it. But okay. there's a few things in there that I'm like, this is actually really, really interesting sci-fi, um, which weren't in the books from what I know, even though I didn't read them. So, um, yeah, I, I think it, it takes basically some of the tenets of the books and that plays on it. So it's more, a, it's, it's not a straight adaptation. It's more right, of a, yeah. You know, inspired by, I guess. Okay, which is yeah. fine. I, I'm fine with it. I'm yeah. not. I'm no. Uh, there are some like Asimov purists out there. That I'm like, wah, 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 wah. Oh, okay, I'm, yeah. I'm like, I think this is actually pretty cool. So. All okay. right. Cool. Uh, and then I'm also watching Doctor Who. Or Dennis and I watched Doctor Who, and so we're five. Out, we've watched the first five episodes of, and next this Sunday is the finale of this season. Is it also? uh what jody whitaker's last so season. she's yeah this is her last full series and then she's got three she's got a new she's doing a new year special a easter special and then a 100 years of bbc special in oh next october and that's when she's leaving the show officially oh god so. i know sometimes it's like doctor who um 
I, I never understood the scheduling. They're like sometimes like yeah, it's, so spread out. It's the like, one thing about this 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 flux thing, uh, this flux series of six episodes is that it, they've tied it into the timing of the show. So the first episode fell on Halloween, so it's called the Halloween Apocalypse. Uh, the date uh, this Sunday is date um, November twenty second or twenty third. Episode was also part of the episode that it was on and then okay. december 5th which is the finale has come up in the story as well so oh interesting. Um, it's interesting, interesting how they weave that in but you also see so you also see the same thing that's sort of happening with discovery is that the scenes are smaller you know with fewer actors mm -hmm. um so you can kind of recognize that they were filming in covid times too if you're paying attention Mm, um, interesting. which sort of ups the drama but uh so yeah um yeah it's it's building to this crazy place right now in in and uh yeah i don't know how they're gonna land this plane in in one hour i don't know how they're gonna do it mm. um or land it enough that you don't feel like you're gypped um no oh, interesting because they do have a new year's special so that, that that's only a few obviously less than a month away now so yeah yeah um to wrap that up so yeah we'll see see what happens but it's been a it's been an interesting crazy very different season of doctor who and and i like it in a lot of ways uh i don't like how hard it is to watch it though let's just say that why so, uh you know you need cable to watch bbc america right um I didn't feel like paying for AMC plus, even though I think it's like a dollar 99, I like just for one show. I mean, I guess I could have, it's just annoying that it's on some 17th ranked, you know, rated streaming service. Right. Right. Um, so, I, yeah, that's been my frustration this year. It's, I thought it was going to be on HBO like the same day. It's not. Oh, so um that's annoying yeah so it's been a little bit more challenging to watch than i would have liked yeah um but you know well mike why make it so hard to watch you know i don't know i mean you know bbc has always been very strange about how they send out things and yeah mm. it's just um yeah so, uh, but that may change with future seasons because uh, I think they're working on new distribution deals. And I think oh, Russell, good. Russell T Davies, who brought the series back in 2005, is the new, is coming back to run the show again. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah. So, and bringing the productions company that did the first couple of seasons uh, back into the fold. So, um, got it. So I think it'll and and he also I guess he also plans to sort of build like a Star Trek type multiverse of oh, uh, God. <laughs> of different of you know of different shows probably you know like well they had Torchwood and yeah that was a while and, ago you though. know so um, I think there's this this desire to create a more I loved uh, Children of Earth that that mini series yeah that was Torchwood. a that was a excellent. phenomenal mini series excellent excellent yeah. um what was oh, miracle day that was terrible i did not like miracle day do you remember that one yeah that's when no one no one could die oh yeah it. it dragged so much like children on earth was like six episodes it was tight it was five um, it was monday through and they showed it as five five says oh, okay. they showed it monday through friday one week and so uh good. yeah it you builds know, it like, so good so yeah, good. it was intense. And Peter Capaldi was in it, who be, later yes. became the doctor. Yes, that was very confusing. That um, he's so in you it. Go back and, and watch it. You're like, that's the doctor. And yeah. no, this is before he was the doctor. So yeah, yeah, it's um yeah, that was a that was a phenomenal series. I think yeah. I've watched it recently, probably in the last oh, really? couple of years. Yeah, hmm. may have tried. It, it I think it holds up. It's it's excellent. Yeah, for sure. Anyway, oh god, okay. Um, we've talked a lot. Do you want to talk a little bit about our sponsor? Of course I do. Uh, Fansets is our exclusive sponsor of Deep Space Pride and the Trek Geeks Podcast Network. And, uh, you know, this month, actually yesterday, the December 1st releases came out. And we have Lower Decks versions of Deanna and Riker. 
Troy and Riker uh, came out this week. So that's really exciting. Uh, plus a bunch of other pins in other series, but those are the Star Trek releases for the first. Um, but we appreciate the the quality and the um, customer service that Fansets just delivers every single time. They're a great group of people. Lou and John and the whole team at Fansets do an incredible job of uh, creating amazing pins. And if you head on over to Fansets, put a bunch of pins in your card. If you spend more than $30 on pins, you're going to get free shipping in the U.S. And uh, if you put the code DSPRIDE, all in caps, in there, you'll get 10% off your order. So we want to give a huge thank you to Fansets for sponsoring Deep Space Pride and the Trek Geeks Podcast Network. Thanks, Fansets. Cool. All right. Finally, we are more or less done with this episode. So for those of you that want to reach us, um, we are around. We would love to hear from you. You can uh, touch base with us on socials, on Twitter, Instagram, at Deep Space Pride, or you can email us at deepspacepride at gmail.com. All right, cool. Cool. All right. Well, that does it for this late night, Thursday night recording of this episode i'm sure we'll be talking again soon mike um and in the meantime for all you listeners thanks for joining us and we will see you soon have a great week everyone bye Deep Space Pride is a production of Coconut Media Works. Executive producers Bill Smith and Dan Davidson. For more great Star Trek discussion, discover the other shows of the Trek Geeks podcast network at trekgeeks.com or find us in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcast app.